Hello, one and all, and welcome to Build. I'm Matt Bagwood, and we are live from London. Today, I'm joined by actual pop legends. In terms of hit singles, they are still the most successful girl group of all time, even bigger than Girls Aloud and the Spice Girls. Please welcome Banana Rama. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Grab a uh, if you have a question for Sarah or Karen, we'd love to hear from you. Tweet us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching us live on Facebook. Welcome to Build, ladies. How are you doing? Hi, thank, thank you. you. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, we've got loads to get through, um, new music especially. Um, but before we do, I want to go back 38 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> to 1981, <laughs> when Banana Rama formed, which just seems crazy to me. Um, what's your like memories of like that time when you started out? Living well, rough. Yeah. <laughs> Karen and I were living in the uh, Sex Pistols rehearsal room, uh, just above in Malcolm McLaren's office. So we used to go down and mess around on instruments and kind of got the bug for it, I guess, then. Um, and then we teamed up with Siobhan and started just doing little demos and playing in clubs around London. So. I mean, it does seem like a long, long time ago. <laughs> it was exciting times. I mean, you know, we used to be out because uh, we were in the West End. Sarah and I were living in the in Denmark Street, so yeah. it was the proper West End, out all the time. Any club that would have us on stage, we'd get up. You do whatever. Well, you always used to look like you were having the most amount of fun. I mean, I can remember like the giggly top of the pops performances. But well, that so was more on. embarrassment than anything else. I oh, mean, really? We, we just yes. left school. I mean, we used to be in the audience and dance to other people. And then suddenly, <laughs> suddenly we were on top of the pops and the cameras were red and green. It's like, where do we look? And Because we were just teenagers. Yeah, and yeah. We, we no actually used to, to go in and, in and be part of the audience on my BBC club card and sort of see who was in the bar and sneak in. And we looked more confident as audience members, I think, than we did on stage, <laughs> which is slightly the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you know, you've been in the industry now for 38 years. What do you think is the secret to your longevity? I mean, obviously, killer tunes. But, I mean, it's, it's really unusual. Not many people have, you know, pop artists particularly. Yeah, I, I think we weren't a manufactured band, so everything came from us the way we looked. We didn't have a stylist. We wrote our own uh, material, which was very naive to start with. But I think now, after this length of time, we're pretty good songwriters as well. Um, and I just think everything was our own idea and we steered our own sort of destiny. And um, I think that's why. And also, Karen and I have been friends since we were little kids. So yeah. yeah. Well, that helps, I think, because a lot, a lot of groups of do break up of because course. they don't get on. So. Well, you evidently get on. <laughs> Is it still as much fun? Yeah, I think even more so now. I mean, obviously, I miss the youth <laughs> today, but um, <laughs> we find other ways of enjoying yeah. ourselves. But you get to go travel all over the world and get treated really well. And uh, writing songs and performing is something we've always loved, and we still get to do. So we're very, yeah. very lucky as well. Um, one of my favourite memories of watching you when I was younger was um, when you were at the Brits and you did Love in the uh, First yeah. Degree. <laughs> now, um, with all of those, I mean, I don't know what I found appealing about it, but there was something. <laughs> I don't know if you remember it, but there was lots of. Uh, <laughs> Something there we for go. everyone, wasn't there? I mean, <laughs> iconic, iconic. Um, is it true that, um, I, sorry, I was going to say I heard a rumour then, sorry, <laughs> that um, you were told you couldn't have those guys, but you just went and did it anyway? No, no, we, yeah. we, we, we uh, were right. allowed to have them. They were not very keen on the outfits. Right. We did want them to be in stockings and suspenders, but they refused. Yeah, they refused. They were, oh, they were, Paul Swayze. Yes. There were quite, quite a few straight men who were really anti wearing the pants and stockings. <laughs> um, I'm sure there were a couple that were happy too, but most yeah. of them not so much. But it would cause such a stir at the time. Yeah. I think it sort of brought the house to a complete standstill and everyone, oh! and we, I mean, for us, it seemed quite normal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't know what that says about us. <laughs> well, it's but we used to have Bruno from Strictly Bruno Tonioli. Was but he's a, on the Wow album cover, he isn't he? Is, yeah. and yes. he's choreographed, I lose the term loosely, um, <laughs> for a while. And he used to say, come in, darling, take your clothes off and give us a twirl. And, and that Not would do us, that would the dancers. The audition, yes. That would be the auditioning yeah, yeah. process. Um, you've always had like a really big gay following. Why, why do you think that sort of relationship has been so... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I think it speaks for itself. <laughs> but, I don't know, I think it's our sense of humour. Yeah. I remember being asked... Um, you know, you guys are so camp in America, and I didn't know what camp meant, and I <laughs> just didn't know what they were talking about. But I can only think it's a sense of humour, and the, 
you know, ridiculous costumes from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read recently as well, and I mean, this is a real accolade as well, that um, Jennifer Saunders, your old mate Jennifer Saunders, said that she actually based some of their nights out with you, uh, <laughs> sort of in, made it into Ab Fab. But is Have you got anything to say about that? Is that an accolade? <laughs> <laughs> well, all I, I can say, all I can say is they were exactly in the same state as we were. So <laughs> they based it on us, they based it on themselves as well. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> right, let's talk new music. I didn't sound convincing. <laughs> <laughs> let's not dwell on that. No. But um, I want to talk about new music, because the new album in stereo has come out. Yes. Um, it's been 10 years since the last album. Why did it take 10 years? And, you know, does it, does, was that deliberate or...? No, we, we, we got into doing the live work more and more over the last 10, 15 years. And um, I don't know, I mean, we weren't in a record deal, but we always wrote and recorded. And we have released a few EPs when we did a tour in the States. We had an EP out. And... Um, we just seemed like a time, the time to do it. We yeah. had we had a bunch of songs that we really liked and thought that were really good. Bunch of a bunch, a of, bunch songs. of songs. Um, <laughs> I, a bunch of songs. I mean, it's classic Banana Rama, I think. Do, do you think, guys? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's a great oh, album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, lady operated the fan on tour. <laughs> <laughs> lots, lots of big fans in the audience. We've got um, the, uh, one of the single stuff like that. We've actually got a clip off, so let's take a look. Smash in. <laughs> It's such a bop, that track. I love it. You look like you're having so much fun We wanted still. it to be like a sort of disco stomper that we used to dance to at school disco, so yeah. that's what the aim was for that song. We filmed it with the same guy, Andy Morahan, that did our original Back in the Day videos. I heard a rumour. I, I yeah, yeah. Back. And um, it was just so relaxed, because yeah. normally you're being pushed into clothes and had your hair, and we just did everything ourselves and just had a really nice day. Yeah, you can tell. Mission accomplished. Um, in terms of writing... my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you both look amazing in it. Um, in terms of writing the new material, how do you, do you approach albums differently, or, or have you just got a formula that you know works and you stick to? No, we work with um, Ian Masterson, who produced the album, co-wrote with us, who we've worked with for the past 10 years, did the last two albums. Um, we just kind of listen to music and say, we want to move in this direction or that. And then he just comes up with some backing tracks and we write the top line and the melodies. Um, it's really simple and really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. And do you have a favorite song in the new album? Looking for Someone, I think. Looking for someone, mm -hmm. Karen. Mm -hmm. Same yeah, one. It's my favourite too. Don't choose another. No, oh. it's my favourite too. <laughs> Why choose another when that's Silly. my favourite? Just go on tour and sing that one twelve times. You'd be absolutely fine. I was getting Blondie vibes on a lot of the tracks. Yes, that's, was, yes. was would, that an influence? I would say looking for someone is quite uh, rocky, rocky poppy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we because of doing a lot of live stuff. I think we sort of went into using more live musicians. Obviously, there, there are a couple of more electro -y things that don't yeah. suit that, although they sound amazing with the band, because we've just done yeah. some dates and put some of those tracks in, and they're only enhanced, really, by the live sort of rhythm section. Is there anyone else that you, you would cite as influences who that you really rate at the moment? Alice D, obviously. <laughs> Sarah's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to say it. I'm not her mum. She's brilliant. She's brilliant. Um, you're playing Mighty Hoopla and, and some other big festivals. I'll get to Glastonbury in a minute. But you've just done these really like intimate gigs, which I know yes. some other audience yeah. were at here today. Mm. Um, which do you prefer? Do you like prefer the the bigger well, gigs or the more intimate? We hadn't done those small inter intimate ones before, and absolutely loved it because we had um, we did a Q and A to start with, so fans could ask us or the audience could ask us anything they wanted, and that turned into a very <laughs> hilarious <laughs> evening. It was highly amusing. I really, really enjoyed and it. And actually so. different every evening, really. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And then the, the music was, it wasn't 80s, it was all our duo stuff and, and the current yeah. album, so that was, you know, great to perform as well. What was the most random fan question you got? Because I, I had a little chat with the audience before you came on and someone said they asked you about snooker at one of the games. Yeah, it's my <laughs> favourite snooker, snooker player. player. And my daughter asked, can we get a dog? <laughs> <laughs> and her <laughs> daughter's boyfriend said, what do you think of your future son-in-law? <laughs> and they all happened to come out of the box, which was quite good. We oh, just wow. got people to randomly put stuff in a box. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, must have been so nice to have that connection, such a close connection with your fans. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk Glastonbury, because you have played Glastonbury before, haven't no, you? No, I have not. Oh, no, no. sack the researcher. OK, so this is going <laughs> to be your first Glastonbury mm. performance. I mean, how psyched are you about it? You must yes, be really. 
really excited. We, we're yeah. playing the Avalon stage, and, and when our ag our agent was so excited, he said that he'd played with other acts, and they said it was their favourite show they've ever done. So that's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. For starters. Do you, and do you get nervous? Are you are you feeling sort of excited, nervous ahead of it? It's or? a nervous excitement. If I can just combine the two words there. <laughs> You can. <laughs> yeah, because obviously we've done a lot of live work, so there's not that kind of terrified like we used to be. But I'm um, nervous because, I mean, Glastonbury is a huge kind yeah. of monumental place to play. So Absolutely. We have done a Exciting. few things, festivals, haven't we, yeah. where we've thought, why are we on the bill here? That's ridiculous. And we've had some sort of deaf metal group on before <laughs> us. <coughs> and people diving off the stage and some in the mosh pit. Yeah. And we thought, and we've got to come on after that. And somehow it always works, <laughs> and I don't know why. And suddenly they change tactic and they're singing along with whatever. So I think that makes me less nervous having tackled some of those. Yeah, yeah. Not going to get a death metal remix of any of your hits then. Oh, you will see. <laughs> <laughs> do you? I mean, do you do you get nervous still when you go on stage? It... Not really, because. We've got our band, which we who we yeah. always play with, and the same team that travel with us on the sound and stuff. So, you know, as long as everything's going well, yeah, the mic's yeah. turned on and things. And um, your old Stock and Walkman sort of stable mate, Kylie, is going to be doing the legend slot. Are you going to get yeah. a chance to see her? Oh, I hope, I so. hope so. Yeah, yeah. 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 that would be great. Uh, yeah, better the devil you know. The best Stock and Waterman song ever. I think I agree. What do you think, guys? Yeah. You're going to say a Banana Rama song, aren't you? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about your rider when you're on tour? Do you have any like mm -hmm. special requests? Cheese and cucumber sandwiches. Specific. Yeah, but they can be hit and miss. Yeah. So you'd be surprised. You really <laughs> <would> be. <laughs> so we have to have a cheese board as well because if they put horrible cheese in, we have to take that cheese out and replace it own. with something of our own. And uh, gin. <laughs> gin, <laughs> cucumber sandwiches and gin. And uh, do you like bananas? See, very English. I absolutely hate bananas. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> mm. I don't mind them unless they're ripe. I can't stand ripe bananas, but I quite like them green. Right. So why did you call yourselves Banana Rama then? I don't even know where that came from. Our first single was sung in Swahili, and I don't know why that happened either. <laughs> <laughs> We learnt it phonetically, and um, we thought bananas, being teenagers, we thought banana sounded tropical. Yeah. Stupid. And we're big fans of Roxy Music. I had a song called Pajama Rama and put the two together. Ah, OK, I see. Who knew it would last this long? Uh, well, the, well the, speaking of that song, the one in Swahili, I am my... I one, am on a... Yeah, yeah, sorry, excuse my pronunciation. <laughs> but that was one of the songs you did on the recent tour when you reunited with yes. Siobhan. So tell us about that. How was it? Yeah, that was a really great walk down memory lane. Uh, Siobhan had never performed with us. Um, she left in 88 and then we went on tour um, world tour without her sadly and yeah. then uh, 30 years later we thought why not because people were asking you know do you think three of you will ever, ever do a tour so we thought yeah it's great it was Christmas time and it you know it was yeah, good it was fun properly yeah. nostalgic yeah we just had a riot Chivers Chivers look at it <laughs> that's a great pick <laughs> God, great like sequin pigeon toes. trousers the old, the old sequin. It was. I mean, it was such a nostalgia fest. I, I mean, I, I saw it, and like the set list was just. Yeah. It's just yeah. so great. You've got so many great songs, and is there one in particular that you just love performing? I think we got quite emotional about Cheers then because um, two old friends. Yeah, so was, yeah. yeah. That was quite when we were rehearsing it. We and it was got... our first flop, so <laughs> really, really sad. <laughs> Double edged sword. <laughs> Is there a song that you'd be happy never to sing again? No, love them all. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, <laughs> she lied. Oh, bareface, bareface. Um, we've actually had a question in on Facebook. This is from Normski. I don't know if it's the actual oh, Normski. Oh, you, you, we know Normski. You know Normski. Yes. Um, it's not probably not the one you're thinking of. He or she, I don't know. Is it? He. A, is, it, he says, please, will you do another tour? I have withdrawal symptoms already. Love Normski. Oh. Do you know what that went down? Our tour went down so well this time around that we actually will be, I better not say will be, but we'd love to do next that again. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It was so much fun. Oh, thank you. And Normski came to them all. And yeah. as a reward, he came back and had a gym with us in Glasgow. <laughs> Was it just the one, Jim? Yes, it was. Oh, <laughs> restraint. That's good. Well, one for him. <laughs> um, in terms of hits, as I said at the top, like you're, you are more successful than like the likes of Girls Eleven and Spice Girls. Are you, or were you, fans of those bands? 
Songs, certain yeah. songs. I, I, like, like, I, I, like, I like the feet, the vibe of the Spice yeah. Girls. I thought yeah. they were great, and they had some great songs. And my daughter was about two at the time; she absolutely loved them. So I couldn't not love them really, because I yeah. had to listen to them every day. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think Summer Girls Are Loud. I don't know. I get sort of the. I can see the influence in some of those songs. I don't know something like Love Machine or something. I don't know that sort of fun, fun but really, really well written pop. Am I on my own here? Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> on no, my I own. agree with you. Oh, Sure. I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I sort of don't see them as like us. No, but in in any way, in in that they came from a completely different beginnings, I suppose, yeah, yeah. from sort of auditioning and doing the TV mm. stuff. But I think the songs, some of the songs are great. Is yeah. what I said. I like some of the songs. I think they're brilliant. Yeah. Can I just say the mics are very heavy? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> They are. Which hand to put it in? Swap hands, swap hands. <laughs> <laughs> You've got two hands. They weigh a ton. <laughs> I was going to ask you a relatively serious question now, which is, do you think uh, it's harder these days for female artists to make it? I think it's, al it's always been hard yeah. for female artists. I, I think they don't have the sort of screaming boy, like the boy band get all the screaming girls in, in the pop kind of thing. But, yeah. Um, I don't know, I just feel it's always much harder for, for females to, to break through. And everything was always guitar-based. I was reading about the Slits, the punk group, yeah. girl group, and, and they were saying, you know, can girls get up there with a the guitar? We really want to, but that you've never seen that before. And I just think they were a big influence on me as a teenager. Yeah. I just thought, wow, there's actually girls that are in a band rather than just guys. And yeah. we very much thought of ourselves more as a sort of rock band equivalent yeah, yeah. than a sort of pop group i think didn't we and so because you obviously you know you, you you're such a pop band especially with stock it and warm and stuff and so on was that something was that just quite a happy sort of direction that you went in because i know yeah, i loved it yeah <laughs> yeah I, well i think we started off with cruel summer which is a really yeah. unusual song and ia you know those sort of really saying something and we were on the front of the enemy and we were kind of very alternative and then it, it's inevitable, I think, when you get massive success and you make more poppy type songs that people sort of think, oh, well, you've sold out or whatever. But it's just yeah. the way it goes for, for well, every artist. And you, you never really had that manufactured vibe either, did you? You did everything yourself. Like, you didn't have stylists or anything like that no. to do. It was all your own thing. Do you think there's more pressure on sort of young female artists these days to sort of look a certain way? Or Well, I, I don't know if there's pressure. Or if I mean, I feel quite proud of the fact that you know, we were successful wearing Doc Martens and dungarees yeah. and not playing on any kind of sexuality. And I sort of think if you want to wear whatever you want to wear, as long as you're comfortable in it, that's fine. Yeah. I would hate to think of girls out there being pushed into skimpy clothes if they're not comfortable with it. And that, for me, would be sort of overstepping the boundary. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, whatever you want, really. Yeah. If, if I look good, I'd be on stage in a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> and what, this is unfortunately my last question, but what advice would you give to young artists trying to make it today? Because... Well, I think with us, we always insisted on writing our own music yeah. and the way we looked. Everything was very much stick to your guns. And I think don't let people say, if you do that, this will happen. And if you go in this direction, this will happen. Just do it, what makes you feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sally, that is all we've got time for. But it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure having you both here. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Please give it up for Banana Rama. Thank, Thank you. you.